contract manufacturing, gave them one of my boomerangs for them to set up. And so what I did was uh, I, I went out and I spent a week with them in Grand Rapids, and, uh, and they profiled our boomerang. They digitized each of the components and, and each of the steps along the way, and they created a program. This was long before this type of uh, software was available and hardware. They digitized it onto a tape. The tape had holes punched in it that told them how the machine was supposed to operate. It was antiquated, but it worked. So I farmed that out to them for a couple of years, and I would get blanks that looked like that in, did you hand me one of those? Or toss it. Oh, throw it. <laughs> this is a stick. This, this, no matter how hard you throw this, this is not going to return. This is, the, this is the profile of the boomerang cutout, and, and we've got the wings that are carved down there, but this has got a whole lot of hand carving yet to be done on it. But this was 90% of the problem that I had in making boomerangs and making them all uniform. And so I farmed that out to them for a couple of years, and then we started doing marbles games. So I got Chinese checkerboards and solitaire boards and nine men's Morris games, and I started having them manufacture those on their CNC and send it to me. And then Land's End Catalog bought our Chinese checkerboards. And it was phenomenal. We worked all year on getting that order done, thought that we had it accomplished, and then Thanksgiving time they decided they needed 850 more, and there was nothing I could do for them. This manufacturer up in Grand Rapids was completely booked for the rest of the year. I lost that customer. I decided I was never going to lose a customer over that again. We bought this building. I went in to start looking for a CNC router of my own. I had no idea what I was going to end up with. This is about four times the size of the machine that was making our boomerangs originally. But the salesman made me realize that I could use four heads instead of one and do four times the production on a nine-foot table instead of a four-foot table so we could lay a whole sheet of this up and not even have to cut it down. We could do the big Chinese checkerboards. We could start to do whistles. We could do all of our display components. So I thought I had the purchase decision accomplished. And then the salesman was really smart, made me understand that if I had four piggyback heads on top of those four main heads, I could have twice that production. So I ended up buying what ended up being a quarter million dollar machine for a $50,000 budget.